Hello, welcome to Born Again Clocks. My name's William, or Bill. Our shop is located straight west of Manorville out in the country. It's a home-based shop. I'm full-time. Uh, take a look at one of my other videos. I have a shop tour on there. And uh, I'm, I'm a clock maker. So you have a grandfather clock. Yet you've had it for years. Maybe you just uh, picked one up at an estate sale and you want to put it in your home or you've inherited grandma's clock or something like that. So you got the clock set up in your house or it's been there for a while and you're having trouble with it. It isn't keeping time, the chiming isn't working right, the strike is wrong. There's all kinds of things that are potentially going on. Also, if you've had it for a while and you've noticed that the chiming sequence is getting slower and slower, um, things just aren't working right, it's a good sign that it needs a cleaning. We're going to talk a little bit about grandfather clocks. I get a lot of phone calls from customers that are asking about what's required. So I thought I would do this video, get a few things out there so you can think about it, investigate some things, and then give me a call and we can talk about when you might want me to come out to your house. Most importantly uh, is the fact that it's some upfront costs that you'll have. Uh, right out of the box you're going to end up uh, paying some money to have me come out to your house. Now uh, that's important for me to explain all of this to you because if there isn't anything we can do at the house to get your grandfather clock running and in good shape then the costs can be quite a bit more. So I always like to explain a few things and that way you're better prepared to have me come out to your house. All right, an analogy I like to use is you have a car. Let's say you have a Porsche, <laughs> yeah, and you maintain it by changing the oil. So you're gonna change the oil in your Porsche every three to 5,000 miles. Uh, before you change the oil or in between those oil changes, you take a look at the dipstick and you see to make sure you have enough oil in there. You want enough oil in your car engine to make sure everything's gonna get lubricated properly and it's gonna uh, function well and it won't wear. That's what lubrication is all about, is preventing wear and providing less friction so things run smoother. Checking your oil in your Porsche is like oiling your grandfather clock movement. This is true with all different clocks and watches. Uh, you wanna make sure that there's enough lubrication in the mechanical parts to provide the least amount of friction and prevent wear. So oiling every year and a half to two years is essential. Now you're using your Porsche, you're driving around and you go oh, 5,000 miles. At 5,000 miles, you change the oil in, it, in the engine. Why do you do that? It's used, of course. It's lost some of its lubricating properties from use. It probably has some debris in it. It's dirty and, and has some debris and gunk in it. So you drain out all that oil, you put on a new filter and brand new oil. The same thing with a grandfather clock. There's a period of time that that original oil is going to need to be taken out of there. Why? Because it loses its lubricating properties. It's collected some dust from the atmosphere and created a dirt and a grit. That grit will cause wear in the pivot areas, on the clock plates, and other things like lifting levers and so on. So changing a clock oil is not quite as easy as changing the oil in your Porsche. It's disassembling the clock movement completely and getting into those areas where that oil is doing its job. Uh, so the only way to properly do it is full disassembly. I've got a couple of pictures of some customers clocks that I have spread out all over my bench. You can just see how many parts would be involved in an average grandfather clock. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a 
grandfather clock, some of the sticky, dirty, gooey stuff that I'm able to take out of that. By taking it apart, I'll show you some of that. Okay, here's a uh, standard average size grandfather clock movement that I have partially taken apart. Uh, real quick, uh, we're looking at pivot areas on a clock movement, which are these smaller diameter areas on these arbors. And your wheels are attached to there and your pinions are also attached to those arbors. Those are what turn in the brass plates. So you have steel and brass. If this wheel would be going in here, this is where it would turn, right there. Now the areas that get oiled are on the outside, right in the oil cup where that pivot turns. Just a little bit of oil in there is gonna do the trick. Now, over, like I said, over the years, that oil gets waxy and sticky and gooey. And when it does, these won't turn quite as easily. Now you can see on this clock, this escape wheel is pretty dirty. It's got all kinds of dirt and goo on there. It has dirt and goo in these pinion areas. And these pivots are a little dirty. Let's look at another wheel in here. Let's pick this one. We can see dirt and grime on this wheel right here. That's not going to be good. And right here, you can't quite see it, but it's a, it's a stickiness on there. Let me take a paper towel and wipe that. You can see the dirt that came off of there. Now, they're going to get a little dirty over time. But when they start getting gooey and sticky, that's when you're going to have problems. This one here is even worse. And you can see better the dirty sticky stuff as I wipe that off of there. Okay, and that's just from age and not being properly cleaned over a period of time. This clock movement has totally has totally lost its function um, because somebody hadn't taken care of it. Uh, they never um, cleaned it. There's a whole bunch of wear happening in the pivot areas and it's just extremely dirty. So this movement has been disregarded. Now I'll take a cute uh, a toothpick and I'll stick it in here and give it a little bit of a twist and you can see how that's getting dirt out of that pivot area which would be right inside of this hole. That's the only way that you're able to clean these clocks is by taking them apart. Now I go through a whole cleaning process that in, that's very involved and takes care of all of that. Now even though this clock movement looks fairly clean, bright and shiny you see golden color that's brass and the steel colors things like that um, it's it's not clean uh, this can be disassembled and I'll find dirt in all those holes sticky gooey stuff these hammers just don't want to stay down for me <laughs> so this clock would need to be cleaned depending on what type of clock movement you have is going to depend on what the cost is going to be. Uh, these right here, something like this, is the standard, the minimum uh, charge amount for a clock movement and a grandfather clock. And then things like this and other clock movements that have many different features can get a little bit more expensive. If I'm disassembling your clock, I'm going to take the time and go through everything inspect it and make sure that I take care of anywhere that's happening. The thing with a clock is you want things friction free, as friction free as you can get. If it isn't, you're gonna have problems. Sticky 
gooey old oil is going to cause things to run slow, to cause things to not function properly, not keep time, so you're going to have troubles. I like to provide photo documentation of what I've done to your clock. So as I'm looking at it before I work on it, as I'm taking it apart and certain things that I might do to the clock to address where uh, I'm gonna take some pictures of it and we'll go through all that information together. Just like your Porsche, it's an investment. You have put some money into it, some good hard-earned money into something and you wanna make it last as long as possible. If you don't do your regular maintenance, oiling every couple of years and at least within about 10 years a cleaning then you're not taking care of your clock properly. It needs to be cleaned and lubricated. That way your investment is going to last much longer and then someday you can hand it down to one of your loved ones and they can enjoy it. So if you're taking a look at your clock remember there are certain areas that you can't quite see and with inexperience you might not be able to notice different things that might be going on. So I want you to be prepared. If I come out to your house and you're expecting me to um, just make adjustments or oil your clock, sometimes that might not be the case. I would say nine times out of ten, it's more than doing that. It's going to require full disassembly and a cleaning. If it makes you more comfortable, I always suggest come on out to the shop, set up a time to come out, We'll sit around and chat for a little bit, meet each other. You can look around, see how I do things, and I can explain things in even more depth for you. It's all about having fun with your grandfather clock, enjoying the process, and learning something. Well, I'm really glad you took the time to take a look at this short video on some of the things that could be going on with a grandfather clock. It can save you a little bit of money. It could save us both a little bit of time. But prepare yourself. Give me a call if you have more questions. My phone number is on my website. Take a look at my shop tour and I hope you have a great day.